It's about the restoration of our republic. We want to educate, encourage, enable the power. We stand for integrity, honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. Good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice Now. We're in our third segment this morning. Uh, we've covered a couple of very, very interesting topics. The first being the, uh, the fact that business leaders around the country are hammering away, bribing, coercing, and uh, compromising Congress to pass immigration. Not because... They think that it not because they have some altruistic belief in the benefit of humanity. They couldn't care less. They say they need skilled and, and, and qualified labor. Let me give you the translation for that in 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 blunt American Americanese. They don't like paying you union and and higher wages than they can pay to a group of illegals or new newly minted green card amnesty driven illegals. That's the lowdown. And how do we know that? Because they're firing tens of thousands of Americans and laying them off in droves. The same companies who are going and firing and laying off tens of thousands of Americans, the same exact ones are going and they are going to Congress and saying, we need you to pass this immigration so that we can get reduced uh, or, or, or qualified employees. Let me tell you something. we got 90 million Americans out of work. There's plenty of qualified employees. What they're looking for is qualified, cheap employees. Our second segment dealt with <clears throat> how healthcare.gov is... Um, so incestuously tied together with the CIA and the NSA that the CIA's investment arm called InQtel has invested in the company called Socrata that runs the data hub for Obamacare. So what that means is that all the information that the data hub is collecting on Americans as they're applying for health care, which they're mandated to do by law, is now in the hands of the CIA and the NSA which is being used to add and compile these dossiers that are being built on every Amer American. I get it. You may say, this guy's wearing a tinfoil hat. I don't know where he's coming from. I'm telling you, don't take my word for it. Do your own investigation. Do your own due diligence. Don't trust me. Go out there and do the homework for yourself. Look at the links I posted on that last video that are at the bottom of the subject or the note, the, uh, the, the note section in YouTube. Or go onto our Facebook or our, our, our website at americasvoicenow.org and click through and read the stories and the links for yourselves. Do a little bit of homework. And I'm telling you, within an hour, you'll be thoroughly convinced. Go look up InQtel on the Internet and find out who they are. This announcement and the fact that the CIA funded Socrata was announced only on September 3rd of 2013. Ladies and gentlemen, that's less than a month and a half ago. And they're the company who is running the Obamacare data hub, not the front end, the back end part. This is the part that goes and talks to the IRS and Social Security and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They take all your personal information, Social Security information, address, date of birth, age, weight, you know, what color socks you wear, what do you like, box, boxers or briefs. And then they go out there and verify all that data with the IRS and Social Security and immigration, make sure you're a legitimate citizen and blah, 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 blah. Then they take all of that information and then once it's verified, they give it to the NSA. And the NSA says, okay, this is Bob Smith. Let's put it in Bob Smith's file along with all of his phone calls, his emails, his Facebook social interactions, his Twitter feed. Don't you get it? <sighs> Meanwhile, <laughs> as if things aren't bad enough, uh, 
the United Nations is been um, tasked by, and there there are applications out there for the UN to restrain the NSA from spying on foreign governments. I'm trying to get this story because up because uh, it's on FP, which is foreign policy. That's where this story originally came from. And FP, which is Foreign Policy Magazine, that's the arm of the Council on Foreign Relations. That's their magazine. And because I reference stories on there all the time, if I won't subscribe to them for like uh, 10 bucks a month, they only let me read five stories. So I've got to find it somewhere else to uh, to be able to, to capture the, the, the whole story because I've, I've reached my limit of five. What a scam. I wouldn't give the CFR. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't spill my beer on the CFR if they were on fire. All right. She was. Um, the UN has been submi- or a resolution has been submitted through the UN through foreign governments, including Brazil and Germany and a host of other governments, who are calling for a. Um, a restraining of the United States and the NSA in particular from spying on foreign governments. Now, folks, you know, this is amazing in the sense that when we're talking here about foreign governments, these are governments that, quite frankly, are are alleged allies. We're talking about France and Germany. We're talking about well, England is so in bed with our, I mean, for all intents and purposes, they're the west, the, the easternmost state we have, right? But let's talk about the realities of who else is involved here. The French, the Germans, Brazil. We actually have, Angela Merkel from the Chancellor of Germany came out the other day and took us to task publicly about the fact that we've been listening to her private telephone calls on her cell phone. I mean, let me ask you the obvious question. And let's try to couch this in a way that every American gets without a a doubt. When you are... if, if If you had great relations with all of your neighbors for, you know six or eight houses in every given direction in your community or your neighborhood or out on your road or whatever. If you spied on those neighbors, if they found out that, and these are the people that, you know, you have a block party with, that you get together and have a beer with. These are the people that, you know, you knock on your door and say, hey, could I borrow a cup of sugar? I'm out this week. And you, yeah, of course. And if they found out that you were spying on them, and somehow or other listening to all their telephone calls and that you were caught peeking in their in their windows and that you were reading their mail from their mailbox and then resealing the mail, steaming it open and reading their mail and then resealing it and putting it back in the mailbox and that you were capturing their email so that you could read their most private communications. How long do you think those friendly relations would last with those neighbors? Were they to find out? that you were up to those shenanigans. Ask yourself that question. Is it any wonder that the world is outraged at our behavior? Is it any wonder that we have lost standing, not only with our enemies? I mean, John Kerry came out yesterday and he said... This will kill you. They're making fun of him when he goes to foreign nations. They're joking about, because of the American shutdown, how he's being mocked by foreign leaders who are offering to buy his lunch because, (laughs) you know, your government's shut down, and I know they're not paying you this week. So tell you what, Mr. Kerry, we'll buy your lunch for you. He's outraged because he's embarrassed, and he thinks whining about it to America will make us think twice before letting it happen again. 
Actually, the way I see it is I'm outraged that our nation is the laughingstock of the unfree world. And he and his boss, by the way, are the direct fundamental cause. What he and Obama don't recognize, or they probably do recognize, but they're unwilling to stop at this point, is that we don't want their brand of tyranny. But the world is looking upon the United States and saying, here's the country that 10 years ago was the greatest nation on earth, the pillar of liberty, the pillar of freedom, the pillar of you know, self-proclaimed justice. And here we are a mere, what, 10 or 15 or 20 years later being caught with not only our hand in the cookie jar, but sleeping with their wives, reading their mail. I mean, it's insane. And now we're being taken out to the woodshed like bad children by tyrants at the United Nations. You've got to be kidding me. We're being called out, dragged out to the woodshed, and we're going to be made to cut our own switch to get a whooping. You want to talk about embarrassing? You want to talk about losing stature? You want to talk about lack of credibility. Here the UN General Council is going to create a general resolution that says the United States is acting against the best interests of its allies and they've got to stop spying on them. Holy smoke! The nation that's known as the pillar of liberty and freedom the land of the free, the home of the brave. And we're reduced to guilt on a global stage by a, a micro-tyrant who's an usurper and an illegal alien. You know, I posted a picture up on Facebook yesterday Somebody got a shot of Obama with his head tilted way back, you know, kind of looking down his nose. And, I, and I, the, the, the arrogance and the hubris on this man's face is just off the charts. And the caption I put on it is, if this isn't the face of Il Duce, Mussolini's, Mussolini from fascist Italy's days, who was Il Duce stands for the leader. If this isn't the face of Il Duce of Italian fascist fame, I don't know what is. One of the most recognized pictures in the world of Italian fascism during World War II was Mussolini standing with his head tilted back, staring down his nose with this arrogant and prideful look, fierce and prideful. It's the same exact characterization on the face of our usurper in chief. I got to tell you something, folks. I know the press doesn't want to talk about it. I know they don't want to make a, an issue out of it. I know they don't want to discuss it openly. But I, I'm going to tell you. This man, first of all, He's not, he's, he's not an American. He wasn't raised here. He wasn't born here. I've seen the proof myself. He was not born here. His birth certificate is fraudulent. I've seen the evidence myself. I could have done a better job making it up in, in Photoshop. The evidence is empirical. The fact that Congress won't listen to it, won't look at it, won't review it, won't hold hearings about it, and won't file impeachment proceedings against him for identity fraud is beyond comprehension. His Social Security number is from Connecticut. He's never lived there. He's never even visited there until he became president. 
He came here and he and he studied here getting foreign student loans. So he applied as a foreign student, which tells us one of two things. Either he was a foreign student legitimately, which means he's not qualified to be president, or he lied to get the foreign student qualification and the free money, which is fraud. Either way, that just disqualifies the man. Not to mention the fact that anyone who is being intellectually honest, anyone who is going to look at this presidency with an unbiased and wide open eye can recognize that he is using a classic standard Cloward and Piven strategy. Why that, why that group? Because they are his mentors. The people who studied the Cloward and Piven and the communistic and fascistic strategies of destruction from the inside out were his mentors. His real father, his stepfather, his influential father, and his mother, and everyone he surrounded himself with, by his own admission, his own professors. I hung out with the, with, with the fascists, he said. And he promised us he was going to fundamentally transform this nation, and he has. And anyone who is intellectually honest, anyone who is willing to look at this with an unjaundiced, unbiased eye, can easily say, this is not good for the nation. Our stature in the world has fallen. Saudi Arabia yesterday cuts diplomatic ties with us over Israel, I mean over Iran and over Syria. Cut diplomatic ties. You don't un understand the implications of that until you think about the petrodollar agreement we have with them. We'll prop up their monarchies and keep them in power and protect them. Remember Kuwait? Remember Saudi Arabia when Saddam Hussein ran into Kuwait and started raping and pillaging their citizens and stealing all the gold and jewelry from their malls? Yeah, we jumped over there and kicked Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait in the first Gulf War. Then we went over there and built bases in Riyadh and Saudi Arabia and protected them from his invasion. Why? Because the petrodollar agreement says we'll make sure everyone who buys oil from OPEC, all the OPEC nations, denominates that in U.S. dollars. So whatever currency they come to us with, they've got to go and exchange it for U.S. dollars first. And we only take U.S. dollars for our oil. But you have to protect our monarchies. We've been doing it for decades, folks. Don't believe me? Go look it up. It's called petrodollar. Go look it up. Don't take my word for it. Trust your own... Trust your own ears. Trust your own eyes. Don't believe me. Critical thinking says that you are going to investigate all avenues. You're going to look at everything around you. You're going to look at that which you agree with, and you're going to look at that which you desperately disagree with. And then and only then are you going to make an, inf in, uh, an informed decision when you have enough information to make an informed decision. I'm just giving you, I'm pointing you in the direction of the well, but it's up to you to get there and drink the water. And it's up to you to put down the Kool-Aid and drink the refreshing, cleansing water of truth. We're being taken out to the woodshed by those idiots in the United Nations. Can you imagine... I mean, these are the same people who terrorize their own citizens. Iran sits on the, on the Human Rights Council. Really? This is the same Iran that surgically abuses their females? Genitalia? This is the same Iran that hangs and beheads gays? Yeah, why are you gays supporting... The idea of, well, everybody should be free to do what they want, man. If you want to follow Sharia law here in the United States, I don't really see a problem with that, dude. Let me tell you something. The day Sharia law lands in the United States is the day that they behead you. It, 
it's beyond my comprehension how people can be so ignorant. Iran sits on the Human Rights Council. This is the group that throws people in prison for handing out Bibles. Please. And these terrorists, these, these little tin pot dictators, are going to pass a resolution stating that the United States is spying on its allies. This president has done more to set back foreign relations, the viewpoint and the perspective and the respect of the United States of America as the greatest foundational country in the, in the history of the world in five years than 10 Nixons or Reagans or, or, or Clintons could have done. At least Clinton's scandal was nothing but sex. These guys are, are attacking our own allies. I mean, it's suicidal. What Obama and Kerry and Hillary Clinton and all of these people within this administration, Eric Holder, what they're doing, ladies and gentlemen, is they are creating a, an environment of national suicide. It's the equivalent of a guy with a carload of people who decides he's going to commit suicide and drive into a bridge abutment at 80 miles an hour. And he's taking everybody else with him. Think about it. Think about it. America. We are out of time, and we are miles behind where we ought to be. If we don't gather some momentum, if we don't have a grassroots uprising in this nation that will restore liberty and freedom, place the Constitution back in its rightful place, we are done. America, arise. Be counted, be fearless, and be fierce in the courage of your convictions. Be courageous and speak out. Speak out even more when your voice shakes in fear. Terrible times are upon us. You've been listening to America's Voice now. When we come back, I'm going to talk about this last topic this morning. This Washington Times journalist whose files were taken from her in a raid, confiscated by the feds. You know what they were? Whistleblower files on the dirtiness of the air marshal service. They openly asked her if she was the author of the articles in the Washington Times and then took her files from her. Ladies and gentlemen, when they're at the point where they are actually openly attacking the press, we have fallen into tyranny. We'll be right back. Stick with us.